There we go. Sharing here, share, okay. So I am excited to get started today. Uh, welcome to our November Accelerator Call. We have a lovely group of people here today and we are going to talk about organizing stuff. And um, my good friend Stephanie Shalovsky is going to help us today with all Hi. organizing type things. I'm gonna ask you all to mute please. Um, during the presentation. I'm gonna do a short uh, PowerPoint to tell you what's going on. And then we're gonna roll it over to Stephanie. So give me a second. Let me see all people entering, okay. I just want to move forward. Give it a minute. I'm going to end the show and start again. Here we go. Okay, so in the chat, if you don't mind, just put your location and we know we're, we're covered many, many states today. Um, what type of job you're looking for and your LinkedIn URL, put all that in the chat when you have a moment. Uh, join the Accelerator Group. If you're not familiar with the Accelerator Group, we are a private group on LinkedIn. Uh, we welcome all job seekers. We post open jobs. We uh, share with each other. We support each other. And we are open to uh, the whole community of job seekers. And that's where we post our events and where we also post jobs. And we help to support job seekers throughout the month. You're welcome to connect with me. Just tell me that you saw me on the Accelerator call. I'm happy to connect with you. And I can also invite you to, a, to our um, group. Uh, and we're gonna talk a little bit about our next event, which is December 7th at 11 o'clock. We always do them 11 o'clock Eastern. And if you wanna get some great career tips, I am looking for a few more people to follow in resource group, which is my company. Uh, so you can take down this uh, link there so you can follow us. And I appreciate it. Our upcoming event, 11-7, is with a good friend of mine, uh, Mark, Mark Halpert, who is a LinkedIn trainer. And his topic is what you absolutely positively have to be doing right now to job search. Uh, when you join us next time, it will be how to express your why. We all need to know why we do what we do. How to create your career story and how to stay top of mind for referrals. So that should be cool. And I think Elsie is gonna drop the link into the chat. She hasn't already. So that you can uh, register for that. Beautiful. Today, we're gonna to talk about organizing your job search. Um, Stephanie and I met at, at a networking event years ago. Uh, we both love to organize things, so we were immediately joined to each other. She provides organizing services to small companies and individuals. She's a member of the National Association of Productivity and Organizing Professionals. I want to make sure I get this all right, Stephanie, so if I miss up, you'll tell me. Uh, she's a certified pro productive environment specialist and a certified virtual professional organizer. How's that for credentials? Pretty cool, right? So 
when I was researching for this for this group today, um, I found this amazing picture and this um, quote says, clutter is no more than postponed decisions. And it looks like this person, whoever's home this is, whoever desk this is, has postponed a lot of decisions, right? I bet Stephanie would love to get her hands on this, this desk area. Huh? When I was laid off from my job, well, it's almost 10 years ago now, um, one of the first things I did was I, I bought a binder and I just wanted to organize myself. I just wanted to know what was coming next. I needed a plan. And in that binder, I remember I, I had tabs for reference letters, for job postings, for um, all the, the um, jobs I was applying for, notes about various networking events, um, probably things that I would now put on a spreadsheet. But at that time, it was just in the binder. It just made me feel like I was being productive and it helped me to organize my thoughts for sure. So here's an organizing fun fact. Let me see if I can open up my chat. Um, yeah. So what percent of that we keep do we never use? And this is a Google fact, so we'll see. What do you think it is? What percent of what we keep do we never use? Just stick a number in the chat. 80, books, 75, what else? 50, 85, 65%, 70%. Yeah, you're all up there, right? Good. Let's see what they say on Google. Move forward. Whenever I open my chat, it tends to slow down my PowerPoint. Well, anyway, the number that Google says is 80%. And maybe Stephanie has another point of view, but uh, that's what Google said. 80%. Ah, oh, Cyrus got it. Cool. Excellent. Excellent. So today I'm going to, in honor of um, our organizing theme for today, I'm going to um, raffle off three, the ultimate job searching checklists for the first three people who put in the chat the word organize. Let's see who's the fastest typist here. I see Diana, who was the first three? Um, I will get that in the chat and I will send that to you. <laughs> I'm going to save my chat so I know who were the first three and you'll get that fancy dancy checklist that you would love to have. All right. Um, also, if you are new to our group, um, I will let you know that we always try and put nuggets in our chat so that we can share our knowledge with people who may not be able to join us today. And so if you hear something that, that Stephanie says, that I say that is really cool, just put the word nugget in caps and whatever you, whatever you think was a smart or creative or insightful thing that you've heard. I will in turn uh, this week make a post of all of those nuggets so we can share the knowledge with everyone, okay? All right, so without further ado, I'm going to stop my share. And thank you for everyone putting your information in the chat. I appreciate it. And I'm going to, ah, uh, Elsie, thank you. Diana Sarkis, Teresa Doherty, and Valerie Ryan, you were the first three. You're going to be getting that ultimately. Uh, but I typed too fast and spelled it wrong, so go to the next person. <laughs> no, that's okay. We're, we're all good. We're good. All right, awesome. So Stephanie, I'm gonna turn it over to you, my dear. Do you wanna say anything to the group before you start your presentation? You wanna say hi? Well, first off, hello everybody. It's, it's great to be here. I'm looking forward to spending the next uh, 20 or 30 minutes with you. We're sharing lots of info, uh, but Minnie, I must compliment you on your intro to organizing uh, slideshow because first off, Barbara Hampel is one of my mentors. She's the one who coined uh, clutter is postponed decisions, which is very, very true. Uh, the picture that's 
perfect description of the kinds of projects I have worked on and I do work on and I have clients who are in much better places now because we worked on their space. And I liked your, your binder to organize your stuff back in the day. Um, now there are a lot of other automated ways to manage the same information though at the, at the end of the day, you gotta use a system that works for you and that you'll use. That's really what it's all about. And yes, 80-20 rule. We, 80% of what we have, we don't need, we don't use. So yes, liked all those points. Well, anyway, let me start my, uh, my PowerPoint and we can get started. Okay. I'm starting with the first nugget, Stephanie, 80-20 rule, love it. Yeah, the 80-20 rule is, is uh, definitely something to keep in mind, whether it's your clothes closet, your desk, your papers, whatever it is, it applies. Okay, just one second and I will be ready. Let's move this. Okay, so let's get started. As I said, I'm very happy to be here. I have lots of actionable tips that I wanna share with you so that you can create an organized and productive workspace that'll support your job search. I remember my own job searches over the years and I remember them being a bit of a roller coaster ride. And I was always very glad to have the support of a team around me that helped me with the ups and downs. Uh, and today I'd like to be part of your team as I share some takeaways that you can immediately put into action. There'll be 10 tips, so I wanna keep this interactive, so please feel free to ask questions. Okay, and tip number one, dedicated workspace. This is a must, I can't stress this enough. Uh, your workspace could be an entire room, it could just be the corner of your dining table, it really doesn't matter. The goal is create a command center. This is the one go-to spot which contains everything you need to do your job search activities. So as I mentioned, it could be a temporary spot. And if it is the corner of the table, uh, just adopt a mobile uh, workspace uh, mindset, which what I mean by that is collect everything at the end of the day when it's time to eat dinner, put it in a box, a file box, something, just contain it get it out of the way so you can bring it all back the next day when it's time to get back to work on your job search. Uh, if you have a permanent workspace, maybe you're doing remote work or sharing an office in your home with another member of your family, do the same thing. Make sure you're containing all of your job search materials in one place so when it's time to work on it, it's just grab it and get right to work. You don't have to waste lots of time looking for things. Okay, on to tip number two, physical and digital clutter. I can't talk about this enough, but I'm gonna keep this point really very pointed. Um, clutter makes it really difficult to find things quickly, as we all know, and it also creates significant distractions. And that's the point I really wanna focus on this morning. Um, how many times have you been looking for something on your desk or on your computer and all of a sudden it goes off your radar because something else is in your line of sight and you start pursuing that and completely forget about what you started looking for in the first place. I know that's happened to me. I'm sure many of you have had the same experience. Keep in mind that studies have shown that it takes about 20 to 25 minutes to refocus on a task after you've gotten distracted away from it. So, so just think about that. If you get distracted by something on your desk or on your computer, you could lose 20 or 25 minutes. And if it happens a couple of times a day, that's 50 minutes. That's a lot of time to lose in any one day. This makes a really solid argument for immediately clearing away all of the distractions. So I would suggest that top of your to-do list should be a decluttering blitz. Do it immediately, get it done, and then just keep the space clear. Okay, number three, think of all that job hunt information that you're creating and collecting. 
Uh, if you don't have a process in place for managing it all, you'll constantly be creating distractions as we just discussed, and you won't be able to quickly locate it when you need it. So having a very simple filing system in place is going to be paramount, whether you use digital filing, paper filing, or a hybrid system. Uh, there are three things that you can do with this information. You can file it, you can toss it, or you can act on it. So right now, I'm just going to focus on the filing piece of this. And I want to just suggest that you set up a really easy to use filing structure so that you'll have less clutter. Uh, keep it very simple. If you're filing digitally, have a very simple navigation system. Don't have like lots of layers. You don't need that. Keep it simple. A job search folder with some subfolders. End it there. Don't, don't go crazy here. Um, make your system intuitive. And what I mean by that is the text you put on the label of the file folder or on a dot to name a document or however you describe a document's name, make sure it's intuitive to you so that without opening the folder or the document, you know immediately what it contains. That's really the goal. And of course, be consistent when you're naming documents. This way, all the versions of your resume are going to be lined up one right under the other when you go to look for your resume. You can see the evolution. You can see the maybe you have various versions highlighting different skills that you have. Whatever it is, keep them all named the same way. You'll save time. You can quickly find the version you want when you need it. And of course, make sure you're storing all your files in the cloud so that you can access them from all your devices and you can share them. And of course, if there's ever a computer problem, because we know computers are not perfect, um, nothing is ever lost. So Dropbox and Google Docs are two of the most popular ways to do this. So I have a quick survey question. Quickly type into the chat what kind of uh, file storage system you're using. And we'll just see you know, how the numbers play out. And while you're doing that, I'm just going to go on to the next um, slide. Okay, I don't know if I can see the chat, but while I'm doing this, Mindy, would you mind just monitoring that really quickly? Sure. My cloud, hold on. Caitlin's using a hard drive. Yolanda's using a Google Docs. Um, Retha is doing both paper and digital. Okay. File folder for JD's, Excel workbook for document job search related activities. Word doc, electronic files, and paper folders. So that's a hybrid for sure. Uh -huh. I saw some more up top. Hold on. I don't think I saw any Dropbox. Okay, so it's it's a combination of a hybrid uh, as well as digital, which is fairly common. Okay, mm -hmm. all I would suggest if you're using your computer, make sure your computer is getting backed up. That's the one word of advice I would, I would give you, and that would be a major takeaway if you don't have a backup in place. Um, okay, let's move on to number four. There's lots of information to keep track of when you're doing a job search, and I don't have to tell you this, I'm sure you all know this. There are the job postings, the applications, the follow-up, and the list goes on. So having an easy way uh, or a system to collect all this, very much like Mindy's binder was helpful to her in the past, is going to be imperative. Um, preferably using a system that doesn't include a lot of post-it notes would be my suggestion. As much as I like, I like post-it notes, this is not a good application for them. Uh, you could use an Excel spreadsheet to track all your activity. Uh, but I've decided to do a little research to see what other options might be out there for those that might want to use an app. And I found that there are numerous apps that were designed specifically for tracking the job search activities. Uh, all of them have free versions and a couple had you know, upgrades to um, paid versions if you were interested. So I just wanted to share quickly two of them and uh, then we'll, we'll go from there. The first is Jibber Jobber. Uh, it's spelled just the way it sounds. Uh, and basically it allows you to manage your contacts, uh, organize all the various company information you're collecting, track your jobs, uh, track your application process. Uh, it even allows you to store resumes and cover letters. So it's fairly robust, robust and covers you know, the entire process. 
Uh, then there's another one I, I found that was called Teal Job Tracker, teal like the color, T-E-A-L. And from what I read, it works really well with LinkedIn as well as some of the job posting sites, the, more, the larger, more popular ones. Um, it also has a dashboard where you can see all your job listings, you can see your follow-up, you can see the status of your applications. So it also seemed to be fairly comprehensive. Uh, there was also, I, I found one called Placement and another one called Job Cull. Um, I've never used any of these. Needless to say, I'm not in the job search mode at the moment, but I was just curious if there's anybody on the in the group here today that has tried one of these trackers and had some thoughts they'd like to share. Let's see if I can see the grid. Anybody uh, tried any they, of these? They want to know the, um, I'm trying to find the link for the jibber jabber. Hold on, let me see if I can do that. Hey. Oh, see, can you drop the link to Jibber Jabber? I think it's, is it J-I-B-E-R? J-I-B-B-E-R Jabber, J-O-B-B-E-R. Drop the link of the Teal Job Tracker and the Jibber Jabber, that would be great. Okay, so I would suggest if you haven't tried any of these, they sound like they could be really uh, beneficial if you're doing a job search for managing all that information because Needless to say, it, it's a lot to keep track of um, in terms of where you are and certain opportunities and what's still in the pipeline and, you know, just the whole picture to get basically the whole picture of what's going on and know where to spend your time and effort. So it's definitely something to consider. Um, let me just ask very quickly, since nobody's using the uh, apps, how are people keeping track of their job search information currently? Anybody want to share? Excel, they're using Excel. This one's using Excel. I just have a question from, um, there was a question here. From, let me see, go back a second. Oh, the Excel Teal Job Tracker is now, thank you, Elsie. She put it into the, the link is in the chat now. Just wanted to read something um, from Jerry Jones. Um, Jerry, do you want to unmute yourself or you want me to, to share what you have just uh, spoken about? Either way. Go ahead, Jerry. <clears throat> yeah, Hannah Morgan had a uh, session with both CEOs of Jibber Jobber and Teal. And then after those conversations, I had follow ups with them about uh, how much they integrate into LinkedIn. And while there's quite a bit of interface, it's not a complete thing. So it doesn't track like messages and uh, things like that. So for that reason, I chose not to use them, but it does keep track of the job, the applications and things like that from the job search side of things. So what are you using now, Jerry? Excel. Excel, okay. Okay. I download my LinkedIn data to Excel also and make the connections that way. Perfect. Okay, okay. very good. Well, thanks Jerry for sharing that. That's very helpful. Okay, so let me, um, if there are no other comments, then I'm just going to continue on with the next uh, slide and next tip, which is number five. Uh, okay, so the job search process includes doing certain tasks repeatedly, like any other uh, uh, process or project that you're working on. Uh, in this case, there's lots of messages that have to be drafted because uh, there's a lot of communication going back and forth. So it could be thank you notes, it could be an initial email outreach, it could be follow up. So a lot of time uh, is invested in, in drafting and sending these messages. So I wanted to suggest investing a little time to create a series of message templates that you can use them as is, or you can customize them based on you know, a specific situation, uh, because this will save you a tremendous amount of time. And it will be especially helpful if you find yourself laboring over how to word you know, a certain thank you note or a follow-up message, and it's taking you a lot longer than you really wanted to spend on it. So it's a, it will be a time saver in those, those situations especially. Um, I would suggest drafting the messages in Word because you have greater flexibility and ease for editing. And once they're final, then they can be copied and pasted as needed. Now, 
both Outlook and Gmail have the capability for you to store message templates that then you can just access as needed. So if you're not already doing that, you might want to look into that. Also, there's an app called Briskeen, which actually uh, does this as well. And it works with Gmail, Outlook, and LinkedIn, actually. Um, and you can create a library of the templates. You can customize them as you need to, add attachments, and insert URL links, or whatever it is that you need to add to the message. So it's just another way to make your job search process more efficient and uh, take less time. Okay, so number six. There's a question uh, about how to spell Briskeen. Um, Elsie's going to drop that into the chat as well. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Mindy. Okay, um, your calendar. This is also a very important tool in your job search. Whether you use a paper calendar or a digital calendar, you know, whatever works best for you is the way to go. Uh, but as it relates to your calendar, I wanted to stress three points in how you're using it. First, um, blocking time for activities. And activities could be networking meetings you're attending, could be one-on-one -on -one meetings, could be time with your coach, could be blocking time to work on specific aspects of your job search. Uh, so you have the time set aside. And also blocking personal time because, you know, as we all know, job searches can be a little stressful. And it's good to try to maintain that work-life harmony. So you want to have personal stuff also uh, represented on your calendar, whether it be exercise or time with family or friends. Second, you want to also block time for focused work. And I would suggest doing this in 30-minute chunks and then taking five minutes off to just regroup and give yourself a break and let your brain re-energize. Um, this will maximize your productivity. Um, <laughs> so when I would suggest, um, let me start again. I would suggest setting a timer when you're doing this. And once that timer goes off, I would get up and get away from the computer, go get some coffee, take a walk around the block, just do something to just clear your head and then come back and do another 30 minute block and, and continue that way until you complete whatever tasks you wanna get done during this focused work time. And this is an ideal time if you don't have your templates set up to do them or to do research for uh, a potential opportunity. There's a lot you can get done in those 30 minute chunks. And third, I suggest blocking time for your beginning of the day and end of day routines. Uh, this is time that uh, allow you to address those tasks that set up your day as well as wrap up your day. And it will keep you organized and productive. For example, uh, a beginning of the day task could be reviewing your calendar to see where the meetings are and where the open slots are so that you know what you have available in terms of where you can slot in time to work on specific activities. Uh, also, it's a good time to review your task list and determine when you're going to tackle that top priority that has to get done on that given day. And the end of the day list would um, include things like clearing off your desk, packing up your temporary desk, updating your task list, and identifying that top priority while everything's still very much top of mind. So that's those are some suggestions on how to use your calendar. Uh, let's move on to automation. Stephanie, I'm just gonna stop you for a moment. Sure. Um, one of the things that I, I have always done and which is serves me really, really well, is at the end of the day, there's always things that have not been accomplished. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the things that were priorities at the beginning of the day have changed at the end of the day. And so I always do a top three list before I shut everything down at night. Um, the top three things that I believe need to get done in the morning okay. before anything else happens. And then if things happen, it happens. But at least I always get those top three things done. And maybe I didn't get a chance the day before, but I've made a habit of that for years. And that's how I, I run everything. It's my top three list. And does that change towards the end of the day? For sure. Um, but I think it's really important to at least designate some time to organize your thoughts before we say we're done. And and you know, and then you move on to the next thing. So I, 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 love, I love lists. Uh, I see a lot of people, others are, are doing that. 
Yeah, no, that's very good. That's why I think the end of the day, especially, is an important time just to sort of regroup and, you know, see where you are and then, you know, set yourself up for the next day because it's all, you know, right up here because you've just finished the day. So it's the perfect time to capture whatever you need to really focus on the next day. And I like your top three. That's it's a very good approach. Okay, so let's move on to automation. A job search can pull you in so many different directions at the same time. Some of the tasks are easy, while others are more time consuming. And of course, they all have to get done as soon as possible. So if you can automate some of the lower level tasks that take up really valuable time, you can stay focused and have more time for the higher level tasks. For example, I'm sure we've all been here. I know I have. Every time I meet a new contact that I want to meet up with and get to know better, it used to take a whole series of emails back and forth to try to figure out that ideal time when we were both available to sit down and talk. So this eats up a lot of time with all those emails flying back and forth, and it's, it's really very disruptive, as well as being time consuming. So here's a way you can automate that and save yourself a little bit of time in the long run. Uh, I use Calendly for appointment scheduling, and it works both on Mac and PC. And this app eliminates the, this problematic back and forth when you're trying to nail down that convenient time. Uh, you can set up your availability in Calendly, and then you get a URL assigned, and you share that URL with whoever would like to meet with you. <laughs> then it's incumbent upon you to... Uh, Did somebody please mute? I don't know who's... Okay, can everybody hear me? I think you can. Okay, yeah. here we go. Okay. Um, so let me let me get back to where I was. OK, so my example with Calendly. So you basically identify the blocks of time when you're available. A URL is generated based on that information. You share that with whoever wants to meet with you. Then it's up to them to choose the right block. And then the appointment is on both of your calendars. So that gets the message of the meeting scheduled with only one email having to be generated by you and that's it. So if you'd like to further automate this, uh, then what you can do is you can use Zapier, which is uh, an app, uh, a tool that connects apps that use daily processes. Um, I'm sorry, connects apps so you can automate daily processes. So when an event happens in one app, Zapier will tell that another app to perform a specific action. So what that means in, in really easy terms is as follows. If you're using Calendly, like I suggested you should do, you've got a meeting scheduled on your, on your calendar. So you can now connect Calendly to Zoom. Since so many, best uh, so many meetings are virtual these days, this is an ideal pairing. Then every time a meeting is created in Calendly, They'll trigger an automation, which will set up the Zoom meeting and generate the standard Zoom email that goes out with all of the uh, URL and other uh, meeting information. So it's very simple, very easy, and it's seamless. You, you did one email and the rest of it happened all by itself. So this is something to consider if you're doing a lot of meetings, especially Zoom meetings, to try to automate some of those processes. Okay, Stephanie, I'm gonna ask you yes. to hold for a moment. Sure. Um, Elsie's doing an amazing job putting in all of these links as you're speaking. Um, if you can just go a little bit slower, that would be amazing. Oh, of course, I'm sorry. Because the words that you're using, like Cali, most people are familiar with, but Zapier, not so much. Um, and there are a couple of questions about the Calendly, if I can get it. Uh, Calendly is free, correct? Uh, Calendly, um... I think there's a free version and then there's a paid version, yes. Okay, and it, it interfaces with Gmail, correct? Uh, I believe so, yeah. And Outlook as well? And Outlook, yes, definitely Outlook. Okay. And then Joan said she hates the back and forth, uh, trying to schedule people. I get that for sure. 
Um, I will tell you though, that I do not use Calendly and that might be something I have to try in the future. Um, and sometimes, I use the opportunity to find out what their schedule looks like because if we're we're scheduling, let's say, a number of coaching calls, and I get information that let's say Monday at ten is my favorite time, I know more about information about that person than uh, than I would if I just had them pick a block in my calendar. Um, and so I do use it as the the ability to meet with people is important, very important to me. And I also like the personal touch. So I resisted Calendly um, for a number of different reasons, uh, but I know, it, you know, I, other people certainly send me Calendly. I just think sometimes it comes off a little cold, especially those automated um, responses on LinkedIn. You know, oh, uh, thanks for connecting. Here's my Calendly, pick a time, and maybe we can talk. Yeah, I don't really know why I'm talking to you. So, um, you know, so that's not generally the way I like to roll, but uh, it certainly is a benefit for lots of people to use that Calendly for sure. Absolutely. Well, I think, Mindy, um, as you alluded to different examples, uh, I think you have to pick and choose when you use the various tools. Like I use Calendly, but I don't use it for everything. Mm. You know, I use it like in a networking kind of situation when I meet somebody for the first time. That's a perfect you know, way to use it. If I'm working with a client and we're trying to schedule, you know, a bunch of meetings, I'm talking to them, you know, over Zoom during a meeting or in person. And I'm actually at that moment, you know, blocking the time on my calendar. I'm not sending them to Calendly to, you know, go through the whole process because then it becomes a, you know, a, a real complicated mess. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's much more efficient just to do it the way you're doing it as well. Um, and I, I agree on, you um, on LinkedIn, I've, I've seen some of those situations where it's, you know, here's the Calendly link, you know, like, let's talk whenever. It's like, yeah, whatever. Uh, so I, I agree. So I think that the bottom line is you have to pick and choose the right situation for when you use the apps and when you, you go via other means, you know, most definitely. I wouldn't use it all the time across the board without question. Good. Are, are there any other comments or questions? Did Joan, Joan is saying she uses Google Meet for personal business meetings. Okay, that works too. Okay. Okay. Um, and all of the different apps have been included in the chat. I didn't open it to say. So I will continue. Okay, so let's go to number eight. Okay. Okay. Email, 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 email. Okay. So when your inbox is cluttered, with read, unread messages and spam, it's gonna be really difficult and overwhelming uh, to find your way through that mess to find those messages that you really need to respond to. So one of the things I would just put out here really quickly is, does anybody now have any messages that are sitting in their inbox? Read, unread, it doesn't matter. How many total? How many thousands of messages? Anybody wanna share how many messages they have sitting in their inbox? Oh, I definitely have thousands. Yeah, most people have thousands. Some have, you know, tens of thousands. You know, it, it runs a pretty wide gamut. Mm -hmm. uh, so because there are so many messages in our inbox, it's very, very important to minimize the clutter there because basically it's hard to see the trees from the forest when you have read and unread messages mixed together uh, and you lose sight of what has to be addressed and what's already addressed. It becomes really uh, quite a minefield. So I have four suggestions for minimizing some of this clutter. First off, if you haven't already done so, try some automation, set up rules or filters depending on which email system you're using. Uh, that automatically direct messages into a specific folder to be reviewed at a later date. So automatically that'll take some of the stuff right out of your inbox. It won't even hit your inbox. Next, I would suggest potentially setting up a new email account for your job search. So you're starting with a clean slate. Um, and then be very selective about who you share that email address with so that you minimize 
the number of unwanted messages. You're not going to be able to eliminate them completely, but at least hopefully, you know, it reduces the number a bit. So there's less to weed through to find the really important messages. Uh, number three, um, <laughs> if you're not going to, if you're going to continue to use your current email address, I would then proactively unsubscribe for messages that are, are of no value to you. We're all on newsletters and blasts and all sorts of different communications that we get all the time, a lot of which we don't read. Uh, maybe we just discard them or delete them, but we don't unsubscribe. So take it to the next step and unsubscribe so there's less coming in to begin with. You can also use an app uh, called unroll.me. Uh, this will also help you unsubscribe for unwanted emails, keep the ones you want, and then roll everything else up into a digest. And it works with both Gmail and Outlook. So it might be something to consider if you have a lot of unwanted emails in your inbox. Stephanie, how do you spell unroll.me? Uh, just like it sounds, U-N-R-O-L-L dot M-E. Unroll.me. All right, we have a lot of conversation going on right now in the chat about unsubscribing. Unroll doesn't always work. Um, I will tell you that I make an effort to unsubscri unsubscribe at least one thing a day, at least, if not more. I'm always looking for things that I can, I don't even know how I got subscribed to some of this stuff, but it's easy to unsubscribe and that immediately deletes some of that clutter. Um, but I think it's a challenge for all of us, you know, just managing that email is just enormous. I will say something about um, your professional branding in terms of how you want people to know you. Um, I had a client recently who is uh, looking for a job who had his email as, um, uh, we'll make up the name, Bob Smith, and then his full birthday. So it was Bob Smith, 2, 10, you know, 83, whatever it was. Like, wow, we're talking about privacy issues. We don't need to put your birthday in your email. Your Gmail should be very clean. It should be your name. And yes, many, many of my clients have a separate email for their job search, just so they have a folder that all job search information goes into that. So that is a um, definitely a, a recommended practice. Absolutely. No, most definitely. Uh, and lastly, if you're regardless of whether you're using a, a, you know, a new email account or you're using your existing email account, set up folders and use them. Any messages that you want to keep or need to keep, don't leave them in your inbox uh, buried amongst everything else. Put them into a specific folder. Don't, and don't create a zillion folders. You know, keep the folder structure minimalist uh, so that you can quickly file stuff and find stuff, but move the email messages out of your inbox and put them into folders so you'll have them when you need them. Uh, because otherwise it's, you know, it, it takes too long to try to find something because you remember, well, there was something, but when was it, who was it from? And, you know, then you go down the rabbit hole of lost time. So definitely try to set up folders and use them effectively. Okay, so those were, that's how we, those were suggestions for dealing with the email clutter. Let's just talk about all of this, um, all of these suggestions. Organizing your workspace, creating an efficient you know, filing system, using the apps, uh, creating templates. Uh, these are all excellent steps towards greater organization and efficiency. However, the challenge is doing all this consistently. Uh, new habits are gonna be needed so that all these activities become part of your daily routine. The more frequently you follow a new routine, uh, the more quickly the habit's going to form. You now, the science does support that repetitive action is needed for the brain to rewire itself. And that's really how the habits get formed with the rewiring. Uh, it can take as little as 21 days and on, and on average 66 days for habits to form. So you really need to be practicing whatever these activities are on a consistent basis for those habits to really get set. So as you're doing that, I want you to remember the three R's. We have reminder, 
routine and reward. So reminder is the trigger that initiates some kind of action. Okay, something happens and then you react accordingly. Uh, routine is the behavior itself, whatever action you've taken. And then reward is the benefit you're gaining from having taken this action. So let's, let's put this in context of you know, the job search. So if we say the trigger is a job posting you saw because it was, and it's a perfect opportunity for you. So that's the trigger. Now, because that's a perfect opportunity, then your action is going to be to apply for that particular position. And when you're applying for that pos position, you also want to update your tracker. However, you're keeping track of this information, you send out the application or you post the application and you log that information into your tra tracker. So the reward then is as a result of doing all that, you can track the status of that particular application through the process. And you can also be well prepared to report your activities during your next meeting with your coach. So that becomes a win-win kind of situation. So keep in mind, lots of new habits, all for the good, but you really need to work at them so that they really become uh, part of your daily or weekly routines. And lastly, number 10, and I can't stress this enough, just invest small amounts of time during the course of the day to first maintain your space, get rid of whatever clutter is there so there are fewer distractions, maintain your stuff, you know, file, whether it's digitally or paper, whether it's email, whatever it is, file whatever you need to keep in a very systematic way so you can always access it when you need it. And then maintain your systems. You know, use whatever apps or processes that work best for you because this has to be customized to you and what works for you. So whatever works for you, make sure you're maintaining them, following those apps, those systems, uh, so that you can better manage your job search. This will all be time well spent and it'll be the key to your success. After all, the more time you focus on the important tasks that will lead to your next job, the sooner you're gonna have that job. And of course, don't forget to celebrate both your successes that are big as well as the small ones, because the small ones are almost more important than the big ones sometimes. So anyway, in wrapping up, uh, I hope that there were tips here that will help you uh, improve your productivity as you're uh, pursuing your next opportunity. My challenge to you, though, is to identify one tip, the one that will be most beneficial for you right now, and to start implementing it, to take whatever action is going to be required to make some changes so that you can enjoy the benefits. Uh, of course, if there are other tips that you want to also put into action, uh, go for it. I just I would caution you not to make too many changes all at one time because I want you to set yourself up for success uh, and phasing in the changes will be the way to go so that will happen. Um, if you want more tips or need more tips, please feel free to read my blogs, watch my videos. There's lots of uh, organizing tips of all, on all sorts of topics uh, in both. So, um, you know, please check them out. Uh, thank you for your time today and listening. Uh, does anybody have any other questions? And what I'll do is I'll stop the share so we can see each other. Yes, <laughs> let's see all these beautiful faces. I just wanted to mention that, um, let me see who wrote this. Um, I think it was Laura said that um, maintaining is probably one of the most difficult things because you can get all excited about something new, shiny and new. Uh, and then after the excitement goes, it's not as shiny and new. And so it's hard to maintain for sure, especially if a habit hasn't been set yet. And I don't know about that 21 days. I've heard that number, but I think it's a lot more than that to create a habit. 21 days seems a little short to me. Um, yeah. So if you guys want to ask Stephanie anything, we have just a few minutes left, not a lot, but um, you're welcome to open up your mics and you know, you can raise your hand. Let's see if we can do one of those hand raising things and uh, let us know if you have some questions for Stephanie while we have her. Eleanor said lots of great apps to look into. 
Thank you to Elsie for getting all those up on the chat. Appreciate it. Uh, does everyone know how to save their chat? You know, you have to click the three little buttons all the way to the right of the button and just uh, right to the, to the right of the chat and just say save chat. So you have it all there. Thank you, Elsie. Any questions? I have one for the group if uh, nobody has a question right at the moment. I'm just curious which tip is the favorite takeaway? I mean, what are you going to do first if you're going to make some changes to the way you're managing your job search? Anybody want to share? Uh, the Gmail, the Gmail automation, putting in the rules. Okay, uh, good. Yeah, when I used to, when I worked, Outlook had rules on email, and then I used the Outlook rules then, so I'm familiar with rules. Rules are good. Yeah, they're very helpful, definitely. It'll help streamline what goes into your inbox, so definitely worth doing. Yeah. Laura, Laura, can you unmute yourself? Beautiful, thank you. Yeah, um, for me, I think it's backing up my document because uh, for the like my main Excel where I've been tracking everything, don't want to lose that. <laughs> oh, no. That would be a bad day. I think the templates for me, because I've noticed that in writing cover letters, I am already going back to ones that I've used previously and then slightly editing them. But it's not like I've gone like cover letter for HRVP or cover letter for director or cover letter for telecommunication. You know, if I just had that rather than what job did this, was this one for, you know? And as you're stating, it's all wasted time when you have to go back and look through that stuff. So if I just go template for this cover letter or this thank you note or something it would save me time. I had to do that yesterday. And I have, you know, in my Excel main document, I have the date of every job, what day I applied to it. And so I wanted that resume that I used for that job yesterday. And so I just looked, what day did I apply to that? 10-6. Okay, I have a resume dated 10-6. Because I don't want it, the saved version that I'm sending to the employer, I don't want it to say specifically for their company or what, you know, I don't want to have mm -hmm. anything that's going to give it away. So I, that helped me yesterday in case that would help you. Mm. Absolutely. Jerry has a question. Mm -hmm. Jerry, you want to speak? Or you want to speak for your behalf? I'm not shy, just, uh, I use Outlook for my timekeeping and I'll, I'll take a look at Calendly, but I have not found an effective way to block time when using Outlook. Do you have any advice there? Block time for what purpose? I just wanna understand a little further what you're trying to do. Like you said, uh, I'll allocate some time for network meetings and personal mm -hmm. time and. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Then it's just scheduling a meeting with yourself basically. Um, you know, very much like you'd schedule a meeting with somebody else, you just schedule a meeting with yourself and put it right on the calendar with the description of how you're going to use that time. Okay. I used to do that for the kids' doctor's appointments. Mm -hmm. I used to do that on my Outlook at working. Oh, that's too funny. Yeah. And you could even do, like, Jerry, you can uh, do uh, recurring events. So if you know every, I don't know, Wednesday from three to five, you want to block out because that's your exercise time, for example, and just block it out every Wednesday, three to five, or every, you know, the first Wednesday of every month, the same way I block out these meetings, generally the first Wednesday of every month. I guess I was looking more at the, like, is it Pomodoro or something like that method? Mm -hmm. but, um, Pomodoro, I yes. Mm -hmm. Pomodoro. I keep scheduling blocks for like, uh, get organized for instance and then lo and behold somebody wants to have an informational interview or something like that and i have to move things around constantly well, well some... I think that the, part of what pomodoro talks about with time blocking and whatnot is is blocking out specific times that you have available for interviewing so you have a block of time that is you know job research sending out emails and then you have a block of time that's exercise and you have a block of time like several times throughout the week like potential into potential interviews you know so i think that you need to block that time and so you don't have to move stuff around and so you then have when someone asks for when you're available 
you have, oh, I have this block, this block, this block, or that block. Um, if that, does that help? I think it does. And if you don't use that block, then uh, you can do it. You do something else with it. You might, you know, reward yourself. You might <laughs> use that for a little extra email cleanup because now you have that time. Yeah, I was concerned about confusing Calendly, but that makes a lot more sense if I do it that way. No, yeah, well, Calendly. Calendly also remember that Calend if you're using Outlook, uh, Calendly and Outlook interface. So Calendly can see what's on your Outlook calendar. So if somebody says, you know, say you said you set aside, you know, 10 to 12 for meetings for Calendly, and all of a sudden you put something in at 10 o'clock on that day, Calendly will see that and, and basically not schedule something. It'll say, well, you can meet at 11, but you can't meet at 10, you know, so it'll, it'll adjust it. So um, it, it works it out. Okay. That's good to know. That's good to know. Thank you. All right, we have hit our 12 o'clock time. We are generally right on time when we end. We're going a little over, I think a very worthwhile topic. I wanna to thank Stephanie so much for sharing her expertise with us. Um, so enlightening. And I think we all feel like there's at least something that we can do to, to make this a little better, make our days a little bit more organized and more productive. Thank you so much. I thank you all for attending today. Um, appreciate you all. I hope you all have a wonderful and productive day um, and do at least one thing that's going to change how you look at your day. Pick one thing. I know for me, I'm going back to the first rule, which is the 80-20 rule. I'm going to look at all the stuff I'm saving and get rid of some of it. That's my, my job for today. Very good. I thank you all again. Don't forget to register for next month, December 7th, I believe, is our next meeting. And I look forward to seeing you all then. And um, go out and make it a great day. Bye, everyone.